Hey, welcome back YouTubers. This is Daniel Strong and this is Excel VBA is fun. Thank you so much for joining me again. Uh, today we're going to go through a wide array of different topics. Uh, several um, several of which have to do with clicking different um, different buttons up here on the toolbar. So right off the bat you may see that I have a few extra things that you normally see up here. Uh, to access them you can go to view and toolbars. I typically instead I'll just right click up here anywhere in the gray area and I typically will have the edit toolbar so I right click on here and I clicked edit you see it's checked the standard toolbar I always have as well that's where I get the play button or as you know the play button F5 or a resetting uh, breaking uh, in the middle of macro and save and all these different buttons that are essential um, I want to talk to you a little bit about what these things do here. I don't we believe we've gone over those, so let's talk about them. Uh, f um, list properties, uh, we're going to go over that in a minute. Uh, you can click it anywhere. If I hit click it right now or click Control J, it's going to immediately open up a drop down menu that's got hundreds of commands and different things that you may be looking for that you might want to fish around if you don't know them off the top of your head and clicking away will remove that. Again, that's Control J. So you'll find all kinds of things. Active cell, active chart, active sheet, dot, and if I hit a period on some of these, they'll continue uh, having more drop downs for more properties within methods. Um, uh, let me tell you some of the main ones that I use is right here. Indent, you can click tab to indent things, or shift tab to un or to out dent. And what I mean by that is, Let's say that you had, uh, uh, it's one thing to click right here and hit tab, click here and hit tab, click here and hit tab. I'm going to control Z to undo, control Z, control Z. But what if you had like hundreds of lines that you wanted to tab them all or indent them in? Uh, you can actually select um, one of many ways. You can select like this. And uh, I'm going to hit the tab button instead of clicking this. You can click indent here or out dent like this. I can hit tab and shift tab, shift tab, shift tab uh, like this. And that's one way to indent. I want to talk to you about um, commenting a block of text or one line and uncommenting. Um, if you've ever used batch files, uh, you've seen people write remarks. They put REM and then they type their remarks and all that stuff um, is not run as, it's not considered code, it's considered a remark. Well, we can do that with Excel as well. We can actually just start a line of text with a comma and type whatever we want. And it won't give me any errors. You notice it goes green immediately. It won't give me any errors. Um, I'm going to take that out because that is not a valid note. Let's say that these two lines here I did not want to perform. If I click on both of these and highlight both of these rows here, I can actually click this little green comment block. And what do you know? It inserted uh, an apostrophe right here, an apostrophe right here, and now it will override, it will ignore these two lines. So they have been commented out, and you can do that several times. And you can uncomment them. Uh, the only time they become readable code is the final uncommenting when there's no apostrophes here, and then it will consider these lines of code and not skip over them. So you can do that if uh, you want to write notes to yourself. I recommend doing that. I would say this area of code, blah, 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 you know, is the date uh, is next week. That's what date plus seven would be next week. And then you might put a comment here of whatever this next line is. So uh, that's how the comments work. Uh, this stop button here is called toggle breakpoint. You can hit F9. Um, what I do typically to, if I want to, if I want the code to stop at a certain point, like you've seen in a previous video, you can hit, type the word stop, and it will run all through the code, but it'll stop at your stop marker. Now I'm going to show you another way to do that. It's a little easier, and it won't stay there as easy. Um, you can, in this gray area, you can, let's say I wanted to stop it here at this line. I click right here. And that's how this, the same thing is uh, toggling the breakpoint. So if I hit F5 to run my code, it actually uh, stopped right there. So um, if I, you know, if I hit F5 again, it's going to run to the next value of x, which is three. If I hit F5 again, 
it'll be four now, but it stops instead of running really, really quickly through the whole code. It stops right there. So that's toggling a breakpoint. Also wanted to let you know, if you ever want to skip over a line just once in a great while, and you're debugging, you're hitting F8, you can actually take this yellow um, point marker and skip over something and just go right or right where you want to go. Let's say you're at the end of a code and you're like, well, I want to run this line again and see what happens. You can actually drag the yellow little arrow to where you want to go. Um, so that's uh, that's it for that area. A few other things. There's an object browser I wanted to let you know about. This is where you can search and look up different terms. And it's also you can get there by hitting F2. Let's do that. Let's hit F2 instead. Okay, now I'm in the object browser. Let's say I wanted to know about the print preview quality of something. I type in print preview and I hit enter and it brings up all the instances of print preview in anything in the Excel um, options. So like for example sometimes I use this sheets uh, and then you name the sheet like for example we did sheets my report and then we close it up with quotes and parentheses then you could do dot and it's showing you here, you could do dot print preview. And that would immediately take you to a print preview. In fact, I can show you that real quick. Uh, to get back to our code, you can click view and hit F and go to code. Um, again, that's F2 to get to the object browser. F7 will get you right back. Okay, um, We could do that really quickly. We could actually not only um, do a, this, uh, well, you may be in a future video. I'm backtracking here because of the audio was lost. But uh, in, in this uh, other one we see that you can make a make a report or a sheet visible or invisible right here. Um, so actually, I think I'll wait on the uh, the print preview property. But uh, you could do something like that. This workbook that sheets my report that is um, the current sheet down here called my report, and you could uh, do dot print preview right here, and that would actually bring up a print preview. Uh, allowing the user to just immediately hit print without, you know, and they'd be able to see that. So that is your object browser. Um, we've gone over the immediate window. Um, properties window, that's down here. Um, if that's not up, you can click view properties window, or you can simply hit F4. Um, you, here you can view lots of properties. There's not so many in a module where we're containing our code right now. Um, but Let's say in the sheet one, uh, which is called my report, there you can name it, the, the actual name, not the n nickname here, um, the object name. You, there's display page breaks, is by default a set to false. If you change that to true, I guess it would display page breaks. You've got enable auto filter, enable calculation, uh, and that's just for this sheet. So you can actually do a lot of things like that. Um, enable selection by default. There's no restrictions. However, you could restrict it to only unlock cells by clicking here. And that would mean that uh, even if they hit the left and right arrow keys, it would only go to the next unprotected cell. Um, or there's no selection where you can't click on anything. So you can do a lot um, customizing these these sheets. And then you got the visible product. Uh, quality here, uh, which you can change from the code as well. So you've got the visible equals uh, Excel sheet visible. By default, they're all visible. Uh, there's sheet hidden, and then there's sheet very hidden. The only way you can unhide one of those sheets is using a Visual Basic code. Um, the user will not even be able to right click and go to unhide. It will not be available. So there's lots of properties. There's this workbook properties you can explore here. Um, and so you can mess around with those um, if you ever have a user form and we have not really messed with that much uh, I clicked here and went to user form there's all kinds of properties in here especially when you start adding um, buttons and uh, you got the name of the button and all these different qualities the color um, all these different things so uh, text boxes and all these things so they all have properties that can be found here in the properties window is that's going to be super duper important when we get to those. Um, for the time being, I believe we're done. I don't think there's anything else I had to go over. Let me see. Okay, yes, I do remember. Um, the last thing, I'm going to go ahead and remove this user form. And no, I do not want to save or export it. Um, um, 
I wanted to show you about, let me go back to module one. Uh, we're going to make a quick macro. I had somebody asking me about how to do a message box. What's up with the message box? So let's do that really quick. We'll just call this, uh, uh, make a new macro, sub, we'll call it um, message. Keep it simple, huh? Hit enter. Well, let's just do something simple. Whenever the user runs this macro, um, we're going to have a message box pops up that says, we'll do the traditional hello world. Let's do that. Um, to do a message box, you simply type M-S-G-B-O-X. And you can hit space, and you'll see the ticker here. Is The first thing you need is a prompt. So what are you wanting to the message to say? Let's start with text. We're going to start with quotes. Um, hello world. Got ahead of myself. Hello world! Exclamation mark. End quote. Now, if I hit comma, because I want more to it, I'm gonna hit comma. Here's your buttons. What buttons do you want it to say? Have a yes and a no and a cancel, or do you just want yes or no, or do you want just okay? In this case, we just want VB okay only. We just want them to be able to hit okay, not yes or no, and have things happen from there. We'll go over those options later. I'm going to hit comma to get beyond my buttons here. Um, what about the title? Let's give it a title. Quotes. How about Howdy? Okay. Now that's all I need. I don't want to help put a help file and program all that and do the context. I'm not going to do any of that. We're just going to have a simple macro that runs a, mac a message box that says hello world and the user will only be able to click on the OK button and it'll say Howdy in the title. Let's try it. So I'm going to hit Alt F8. That is your macro uh, toolbar here. And I'm going to double click on the one that says message. Let's run it. And oh, a message box pops up. It says hello world and says howdy in the title. And sure enough, there's only an OK button. Um, real quick, I'll show you what would have happened if I would have typed VB yes no. Um, uh, VB yes no only, I guess it is. Well, my goodness. Let's go here and hit comma and see what our options are. VB, well, VBS, no, maybe I did a typo. I was waiting for it to capitalize it. Let's try that. It won't do us any good, but let's um, Alt F8. Uh, we'll click on the one called Message, and it says Hello World, but now there's a Yes and a No clicker, and neither of them do anything but continue the macro and let it finish its course. So thank you for watching, and God bless, and I uh, hope you join us next time for Excel VBA is fun. Thank you.